Sunday mornings. Grandma's name. Play the tambourine so well. Grandma's name. Used to issue out a warning sheet saying, Baby, don't you run so fast. Might fall on a piece of glass. Could be snakes there in the grass. Grandma's hands. Grandma's hands. Sue the local unwed mother. On a piece of glass, might be snakes there in that grass. changed. Now I know the laundry's been done. Please make sure and change these sheets, okay? Come on, people. We gotta do better. We gotta do better than this. Ka oh my God. Is that another dirty bedpan? Look at these sheets. Look. Kathy, listen. I don't want these residents to get bed sores, okay? Kathy and James, get on it. How you doing, Miss Carla? Hey, Alan. For everything, there is a season. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to laugh and a time to cry. A time to tear down and a time to build up. You like that, Miss Watson? Miss Watson. <sighs> <sighs> Easy rest retirement home, we're better living. Are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? I don't care, do not call my job looking for Malika. I, I, do not call my job. <sighs> Easy rest retirement home, we're better living is an option. May I help you? Oh yes, yes, I'll make sure they're ready for that shuttle pickup. No problem, thank you. Are they ready to take me to dialysis? Your appointment is tomorrow, Carson. Tomorrow? I could be dead by tomorrow. Carson, you will not, okay? The shuttle will be here in the morning. You feeling all right? Yeah, I'm feeling all right. I can just use a cup of coffee, that's all. Carson, you cannot have coffee. That's the main reason why you're going to dialysis, so they can flush all those fluids out of you. Well, then I should be able to have some coffee if they're going to flush all them fluids out of me. Carson? I'm not gonna argue with you, okay? I can't have this, I can't have that, this is crazy. Well, I'm sorry. That's the life of a man with diabetes and kidney failure. Uh, Dahlia, would you make sure and watch them, make sure they change those sheets upstairs? Yes, I'll make sure they're on it. And why hasn't Carson left yet? Oh, the shuttle will be here tomorrow. Mm, and it will probably be late. You know, with these state-run shuttle programs, I don't know how they expect us to run this place. I mean, we have four people helping, 30 patients, the back rooms are full. I'm at my wit's end, I don't know what else to do. Carla, calm down, okay? I've actually been thinking about that, and I found a way for us to get some help. Oh, well, okay, how? Well, you know the courts is giving community service to people, right? Well. I I called to have them send someone over. No, I don't know about having a criminal in here. Carla, these are minor offenses, and they'll come here and work for us for free. No, I don't know about this, Dahlia. Carla, come on. I really think we should try it, and I already called. Dahlia! Carla, come on, well, free? Uh, you know what? All right, fine. We will try it. Thank you. But if it doesn't work, I am blaming you. And why isn't Mrs. Watson sitting in front of the TV? Come oh, on. I was reading to her. This woman hasn't said a word in over a year since she's been here. Well, her daughter asked me to, and I promised her that I would. But then you should probably have her daughter read to her. Well, Carla, she would if she were here. She just got married. She went on her honeymoon before her husband went back to Afghanistan. She got married? Yes, Carla. It was the most beautiful wedding ever. Malik and I had a great... 
Wait, she invited you. Why didn't you come? Oh, I had things to do. Like what? Like minding my business. Listen, you have to stop wasting your time reading to this woman. There are several patients who need your attention. You have to learn how to choose your battles. The universe is speaking. The universe? Carla, wait, I haven't seen you at church lately. What's going on? Oh, I'm not going to that church anymore. Why? What happened? I am now studying with a guru on the powers of the universe. All that noise in that place, I'm past that. But Carla, you've been going to that church since I was a little girl. Yeah, I know, but this is better for me. Carla? Look, Dahlia, at some point you have to grow up. You'll see that you're wasting your time at that place, too. Look, girl, I know you still heard by hey, this, but hey, you gotta hey. find a way to... We are not talking about that. Oh, uh, hello, ladies. How you doing, Miss Carla? Hey, Alan. Hey, hey, Dahlia, you talked to her for me? No, I didn't say what anything you, to her. You, you went in nothing. there, you could have said a little bit more than hey. <laughs> Easy rest for time at home, we're better living. Uh, uh no, 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 I'll, I'll get her. I'll get her, thank you. Hattie! Hattie! <gasps> Hattie! Get inside, please! That's the fourth call I've gotten this week. You do not want to get sick. <laughs> I was trying to make a run for it. And Hattie, where were you going? Just as far away from here as I can possibly get. <clears throat> All right. Well, it's time for you to take your medicine. I already take my medicine. Um, no, you did not. I already take my medicine. You did not. Did you? Did not, did Hattie. You? Did not. Did, did you? not. Did, did you? not. Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Hattie, you did not. They're right here. I already take it, but if you want me to take it again and overdose, it ain't gonna be nobody's fault but your own. Uh, well, uh, wait, 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 wait. No, when did you don't back down. Not gonna get them. When I die and when I get the glory, I'm going to tell God, don't charge me, charge her. Because I wasn't ready to be here. She fast forwarded me here. She fast forwarded me here. Patty, why do you do this to me? You know I'm married and I have bills to pay. You wait one doggone minute. Don't you go whining to me. You wouldn't be able to maintain my schedule. I had to manage seven children, two husbands, and three boyfriends all at the same time. <laughs> you don't even know what medication to give me and what time to give to me. To my time. Baby, it ain't easy cheating when you're married. <laughs> Patty, that's awful. You know that's not of God. I wasn't much thinking about God then. I was trying to get my groove on then, baby. Mm. I was dropping it like you were hot back then, baby. Hattie. Hattie. Did you or did you not take the pills? That for me to know and you to find out. <sighs> Fine, I'm not gonna play these games with you, okay? Come on, open up, take the pills. I already take my maze. Patty, please open your mouth and take the pills. Now, don't you spit those out. <laughs> All right, now ma'am, you're gonna be just fine here. No, I'm not. Um, baby, who is this? <sighs> A new patient. She got put out of her house and we were told to bring her here. Oh, baby. Yeah, I know it's sad. Hold on, not another one. I just spoke to them at the state. I told them we didn't have any more room for another resident. This is ridiculous. You know what? I need to call the county. That's what I need to do. Carla, she can hear you. Dahlia, let me do my job. Dog, she ain't in a good mood today. Hi, I'm Dahlia, and you are? Not staying here. <laughs> Her name is Barbara. Um, well, Miss Barbara, you'll be very happy here. We have some really kind people that will take good care of some you and really make sure that you... Some really kind people here that will bust you upside your head. Now, let me go and lay the rules down for you, sugar. Long as you don't touch my man or my Fruity Pops, me and you gonna be just fine. Me and you gonna run on to see what the end gonna be. Uh, <laughs> uh, please forgive her. She hasn't taken her meds yet. She's a little high-strung, but Miss Barbara, you'll be fine here, okay? She's the only one that way. I'm not gonna make it here. I'm gonna die. I can't believe they just left me here. Yeah, that's what they do. They just drop you off and leave you. Don't talk about my children. Please, shut up. Who you think you talking to? I'm talking to you. Well, you feel froggy then jump on over here and do something then. Who is this pathetic little person? This here is whoop ass in a can. 
Now you show sure you don't want to pop it open? Pop it open! Pop it open again! Howdy. Cross over the line, Ben! Cross over the line, Caroline! <laughs> Please believe, baby, I ain't never scared. I can assure you, precious, this right here, this ain't what you want right here, baby. Whoa! I done dropped that dusty road on you, baby. This ain't what you want. And it, you run into this brick wall if you want to and commit suicide. <laughs> all right, come on, Miss Hattie. Don't be touching all on me. Don't you see my man here looking at you? Hmm. See me after he go to dialysis here. Yeah. <laughs> Dahlia, Dahlia, go ahead and check her in. And Alan, when she's done, would you check her vitals, please? Yes, anything you need, Miss Carly. We be needing anything else, like now, lunch, I dinner. I need you to check her vitals. All right, yes, ma'am. Uh, denied. <laughs> man, why don't you leave her alone? You just keep after her. She don't want you, man. Yeah, but I want her. Man, you don't make enough money. She dates doctors and lawyers. Man, you can't put a woman like that. Everything ain't about money, son. Why would you want to date her anyway? She mean as a snake, man. Somebody. 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 You know what? I keep trying to tell you for your own good, but you go right ahead. Keep getting your feelings hurt, okay? See, that's the problem right there. Your little young Thundercats always trying to tell old school what to do. We was here first, boy. We got this game on lockdown. Man, all right. old school <laughs> just got the dough slammed in his face, man. Uh, uh, Miss, Miss Barber, let me go on and get you checked in. My name is Alan. If you come with me and just... Turn right, right here at the desk. We'll get you checked in. Is all right? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> hey, I'm Carson. Mm -mm. Don't talk to me. <laughs> what's wrong with her? <laughs> Don't worry about what's wrong with her. You better not let me catch you talking to her now another gear. I'm going to bust you outside your head. Woman, you don't own me. I do own you because I push it on you, Carson. <laughs> And stop sneaking in my room at night, slipping them blue pills under my tongue. I ain't even much do that. Yes, you did, and I can prove it. Well, prove it then, Carson. Prove it then. But I ain't want you. Yes, you do. You just don't know it yet, Carson. <laughs> prove it, Carson. Prove it. Prove it, Carson. Prove it. Down you. Howdy. Woo! Down you. Howdy. Woo! That's crazy. Howdy. Please, get down off of Carson, okay? Dahlia. Hattie, now, now, off of Carson. He is not a horse. Yes, he is. He my black stallion, and I like to ride. Down. down. Woman, I ain't dating you. So you think you just gonna take my virginity and leave me? Woman, you crazy. You ain't been a virgin since... Since I slept with you. I don't want you. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. See, back then you ain't want me, but now I'm hot, you all on me. <laughs> it's hot in him. Hattie. It must be a party in the atmosphere, cause I miss him. Hattie. Yes, I miss that I miss him. Hattie. I am so stressed out this morning. I have a headache, and I asked you really nicely to please take your medication. Ah! And ah! Hattie! Ah! Hattie, what's wrong with you? <laughs> you had to hit me like that. <laughs> you had to hit me like that. Hattie, but you... I'm a god to bobo you. What, what are you talking about, Hattie? Were you going to jail tonight? No, I'm... Hattie, till you do right by me. Hattie. What am I doing? Patty, please stop crying. Patty, please. <laughs> How you doing, honey? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> yeah, what the hell is wrong with you? Uh, 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 uh. She looked like one of the things you hit used to box back in the day. Remember them things? Uh, <laughs> How you doing? No, 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 I, I don't. Please don't do that to one of our residents hey, here. Yeah. I know who that is. That's Edith Bunker. How you doing, Edith? Where's Archie? 
Um, no, ma'am, uh, ma'am, please stop doing that, okay? Uh, oh, oh, please, oh, ma'am, what are you doing? Please, um, Who is this, that? Is, this is one of our residents here, Miss Watson, yeah. and she has Alzheimer's. Um, orderly, can you please come and get Miss Watson and take her upstairs? Oh, I'm sorry. I ain't know she had no all the time. I'm sorry. I ain't know that. I ain't um, know that. I'm, I'm here looking for somebody named Delectable, Delightful, Delusional, Delicious. What the hell kind of name is that? What did that say? Uh, that D E L. No, no, no. That says Dahlia, and oh, that's Dahlia. me. Dahlia. Dahlia. <laughs> wow. Ooh, Dahlia. Yes. That's a nice name. What that mean? It means gentle in Swahili, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, what's your name? Mabel. Hi, Mabel. And your name means? Tough as hell in College Park. How you doing? Uh, <laughs> I'm here from the court. Oh, yes. Ooh. Yeah, they told me to come over here and do 20 hours of community service. Glad to have but you. But I'm not finna do that because I got things to do. So go on, sign this paper. I'm gonna take that down to the cab counter to the judge, and I'm gonna get the hell on up out of here. Sign your name, baby. That's all I gotta do. I'm gonna uh, buy me some scratch offs. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I can't sign this. Only Miss Carla can, and Put she's over there. Put her name down there. Put her name down. Anybody look? Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Anybody look? <laughs> Uh, but that's forgery, and that's very untrustworthy of me to do that. Untrustworthy? <laughs> wow. Are you a Christian? Uh, how did you know? Y'all work on my nerve, child, doing the right thing all the time. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Miss Mabel, I take it you're here to be a good employee. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not here to do that at all. I'm, I'm gonna do it 20 hours and get the hell up out of here. Um, okay, well, the job is simple. All you have to do is a little cleaning. I'm allergic. To cleaning products? To cleaning, can't do that, sorry, next. Okay, um, well what about, oh, cooking, can you be our chef? Nope, yes? you can reach up to the top chef, give me a double shot of Hennessy and Patron on the rocks, I'll be straight up peacefully, yeah. Uh, okay, well, um, what about um, secretarial? The horse? The no, ain't nobody finna be riding me up in here, honey, no. I used to be a stallion, but I'm on my way to a mule right about now, so I can't do that. Okay, well, uh, Miss Mabel, what can you do? <laughs> I can sit right here and wait for these 20 hours to be up. That's what the hell I can do. Um, okay, well, um, well, we need you to do some work in order to get that signature. Fine. Okay, um, well, can you answer the telephone, maybe? Yeah, I can do that. I used to work for a pimp back in the day. Oh. Yeah, I used to answer the phone and say, pimp's up, hose down, can I help you? Um, okay, well, um, this is Easy Rest Retirement Home, where better living is an option. Well, you want me to say all that when I answer the phone, Easy Rest Retirement Home? Where better living is an option. Well, that would be an option. Okay, great, I can say that. Okay, um, and now there's a few things that I need to know. Yeah, okay, he's so excited for when the phone rang. <laughs> Easy Rest Retirement Home, where better living is an option. You heard that? <laughs> How the hell can I help you? Huh? Look for somebody named Malik. Malik, uh, that's my husband. Is that Katanya calling Is here? Is this Katanya calling here? Yes, Malik, yes. She said, oh, you the baby mama? This the baby mama. Yes, I know that. Please tell her don't call she here. She said she know you the baby mama. Don't call. Oh, girl, I can't tell her that. I just met her. You got cussing like that. <laughs> oh, she won't let, she said you won't let him come see his son. Yeah, and he's not coming back over there. What? Ooh, <laughs> girl, I got to go. I'm a sinner. You making me blush. <laughs> That's pretty good, though. She just cussed you the hell out. She is girl. cussing me out. Girl, she cussed you out. <laughs> wow. Words could kill you. Be sliced up. <laughs> oh. Wow. wow. Okay. Um, I'm sorry you had to hear that. No, no worries. Wonderful. Now, here's the files for all the um, living patients. Okay, these are all the living. Okay, wonderful. And here are the files for all the deceased patients. Hold the hell on. When This is the living? Um, yes, ma'am. And this is the dead? Yes. I gotta get the hell out of here, y'all. Oh. Uh, 
No, 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 Miss, Miss no, Mabel. No, y'all killing people up in here, honey, no. Miss Mabel, um, these all need to be filed. You have nothing to worry about, okay? Nothing. <laughs> now, um, when someone calls for Miss Carla, uh -huh. you're gonna transfer them to this extension. This extension, okay, when they call, check card, I understand. Okay, and then when someone calls, you need to place them on hold, just press Oh, the I know what button. that is. Okay. Watch this, I'm pressing down. Um, Miss Mabel, yeah. well, um, first of all, someone has to be on that phone for you to press. No, that I'm button. pressing the whole button. The what button? The whole button. But, but what? What is this? This is presenting. Who are you presenting? The hoes. Well. <laughs> yeah. See, when I used to work for the pimp, you press this button, all the girls come from the back and they line up. Right. So you press the whole button, they all come, and you say, "Hello, can I help you?" Yeah. Okay, well, now, uh, when someone calls for a deceased patient, uh -huh. it would this be great. This is a lot of instructions, honey. This is a lot to, for you to tell me to do on the first day. But you, you'll, you're going to get it. I, I know you will. Okay, what I got to do now? Okay, now, when someone calls for a deceased patient... So that means somebody's dead. Dead, Okay, yes. say dead, honey. Don't say deceased. That's oh, too that's... proper. Somebody say dead. Say dead. Deceased. You know what deceased means? That, that, that sounds harsh. What? That the they dead? dead? But they dead. They can't hear you. We are sorry to inform you that Blank is deceased. Let me change it. We are sorry to inform you that Blank is dead. Well, Miss Mabel, um, well, okay. That we're not gonna say a Blank. We're gonna put a name in that Blank. Girl, when I see a Blank, I know it to feel it. <laughs> we are sorry to inform you that Dahlia is dead. <laughs> Cause she was working on my Blank nerves as I sat here trying to do this Blank job. Well. You got it. Good, you catch on quick, right? Yeah, you do too. <laughs> because my gun is not full of blanks. <laughs> <laughs> I got it, wonderful, what else? When someone comes to visit a patient, uh -huh. it would be great if you could get their name and who uh, they're here yeah, to see. Yeah, name here, I see that, wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Easy rest, return. You ain't finna sit here and stand over me like I don't know what the hell to say when you told me five times please, what to say on this phone. Please, you Ms. ain't Mabel, finna do that to me. Ms. You Mabel, ain't finna do that to me. Miss Mabel, um, <clears throat> someone's on the phone. Who you looking for? Barbara Nichols? Uh, she's uh, in the upper room. Okay, she's dead. Nope. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry to inform no. you. Uh, 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 Miss Mabel, um, she's, she's not dead. She's alive. She's, she's here and she's upstairs. Why do you say she's in the upper room? Uh, that's the proper way to say that it. That's not the proper way to say it, honey. Everybody who was in the upper room is dead. The upper room was back in the Bible times when the 12 disciplines was up there waiting for the Holy Ghost to come. Everybody who was in that room is a dead. They have been sainted and mortalized in the church, okay? Learn the Bible or something, honey. Pick up the Bible. You will know that that was the Holy Ghost called Hurricane Katrina that came through, <laughs> took the roof off the place, and shook up everybody. And then they were speaking in all these different tongues. Ain't nobody could understand nothing because they started talking Japanese. Read your Bible sometime. <laughs> now you got me upset, this girl talking about all that stuff. She in the upper room. Just tell me she in the upper room. Ma'am, are you there? Stop crying, please. Yes, funeral arrangements will be held this day. <laughs> Funeral arrangements? What is wrong with you? You can, she's not dead. Honey, when you tell a lie this bad, you just got to go with it. <laughs> you can send flowers, thank you. Oh my goodness. Okay, but this is gonna be fine. I believe I can do this job. It's gonna be all right. Oh my goodness, she thinks that, oh, I got it. Eat the bread for time at home, but this is the facility, may I have to? What you think? You trying to reach Barbara Nicholas? Oh yeah, she is upstairs resting. She is taking a nap because everybody's tired as we eat jello and go to bed. <laughs> Somebody told you she was dead. Now who would play off a joke on you like that? That is terrible. The devil is alive. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. No, honey, she is alive and well and doing very good. You can come visit her at any time.
Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye. I bit my tongue. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, that's good, though. Well, you say it. Yes, she did. It. Hey, Talia. Da, 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 come back here, honey. I don't know what the hell you coming up here like Mary Tyler Moore throwing your head up in the air here. What the hell wrong with you? You ain't, you ain't got no uniform on, nothing. You ain't got no name tag, so you're obviously a business tech, right? Yes. Okay, and I need your credit card number and the last four digits of your social. Excuse me? Um, Miss Mabel, um, that's not on there. <laughs> oh, girl, I'm getting ready to hit Lennox Mall on you. I ain't lying. I'm going to set you up here. Can, can I go? go on up? Yeah. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Wow. Who is that? That's Miss Watson's daughter, the lady that was sitting right there. Oh, OK. She comes and reads to her every single day. Uh, every All day. All the time? And she just got married, and she's back here again. Oh, man, How five. How long she stayed when she come here? Five, six hours, one day, eight, nine oh, that's hours. That's a lot, honey. That's a lot to be sitting around. My dear! La yeah! We, we got, got them things we shut them down. We got, got them things they look around you too. <laughs> Daddy, look at you. <laughs> Daddy, look at you. Looking La like you. Cause I did one little bitty thing. What you do, honey? I slept with her, man. Daddy, at some point you got to let it go, honey. Some point you just got to give it up. Well, that's what I did. I gave it up and I let it go. <laughs> Lord, that's nice. You got all right there. You like my dress? Ooh, that's nice. This is my uh, Coco Chanel. That's nice. Bounce, 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 bounce. <laughs> <laughs> you can afford to wear that now? No, no, my next door neighbor, her name Coco and her daughter named Chanel, they sew and they make these. <laughs> yeah, they sell them over there in the West End at Lee, Lee, Lee Street, right there at the corner of that Martyr Station. You can go over there and pick one up right across the street from the Krispy Kreme. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but don't go over there after night. <laughs> Look at you. Yeah. Looking like you looking. <laughs> You go away in here, you always say the nicest things. I'm so glad you think so. Because sometimes I look at you, head, I don't know if you have a mirror or a friend. Because one of them would have told you the truth. Lord, you know, Mother, sometimes I look at you, I don't know if you have a razor or shaving cream. <laughs> Hormone problems. <laughs> I'ma get you, I'ma get you for that one. I'ma get you for that one. Dahlia, I, I am looking over this woman's arrest record, and I don't know about this. Carla, you have nothing to worry about. She's already here. Just oh, come she's meet her. here? Yes, okay. she's doing good. She's training really well. Answers the telephones. Don't worry about it. OK. Hi, Miss Mabel? Yes. Just wanted you to meet Miss Carla. Hello. Oh, Car oh, you don't want to sign the paper. OK, go on and sign this paper for me, please. Just go on and sign your name down uh, there. Don't worry about what it is. Just sign it. I'm afraid you have to actually do the community service. Oh, you like that, huh? Okay, you a Christian too? Well, no, but I don't want the universe to send that bad energy back to me. Oh, the universe, hmm. <laughs> I, I've been looking over your arrest record yeah. here. Yeah, uh, pretty impressive, right? <laughs> First felony, nine years old, bam. <laughs> well, I was doing the damn thing. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, I'm sure Dahlia has already instructed you. Okay. You can go ahead and get started. Oh, thank you so much, I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you so much. Oh, she's, so, she's so nice and bougie as hell, Yeah, she bougie now, she bougie. I can't believe I have a prisoner working for me. What'd you say about a prisoner, honey? No, speak up, say, speak your mind. What'd you say about a prisoner? I, I, was, I was just saying that I was surprised to have a prisoner working here. See, that's what's wrong, people. Y'all don't give folks a chance to get back in society after they've done something wrong and went to jail. You need to give them a chance to get a job and get back up on their feet. 
If you sit next to somebody that's clapping right now, they've been to jail, so watch your purse, please. Thank you. It's a public service announcement. last night and this counter was a mess. Well, no, I know that counter was clean last night. I think someone was up late eating. Don't look at me. Patty, you still eating. <laughs> Muddy, you know I smoke that reef. I get the munchies at night. It's gonna be all right. I don't feel like I am. Oh, God. You got to get me through this. No, it's gonna be all right. Don't worry about it. It'll be oh, fine. Oh, no. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Hattie, don't let it happen again, OK? Slow your roll, precious. There ain't none of your little barbary in here. Hattie. Look, Hattie, just don't go back to the counter after lights out. You got me? Look, Gordon, I didn't go back to the counter after lights out. You got me? Hattie, stop playing with me. You stop playing with me and don't be taking your frustrations out on me because you been messing around with a married man for six years. He divorced his wife when he married somebody else and still didn't even come back and marry your own stinky tail. Dahlia! In my office right now. Now, Hattie, you wrong for that. You don't sit here telling that girl business and talking all loud like that in front of everybody. You gotta wait until they close the door. Now, what happened, girl? Tell me. Are you telling my business? No, no, I didn't say a word. Well, how did Hattie know that? Carla, I don't know. Oh, I don't like her. I don't like her. I don't like this. I just. Carla, calm down now. You know me. You're right. Yes, I do know you. I'm sorry. And I have a date to get ready for. I'm not even gonna think about what she just said. These are rest for time. Well, all hell breaking loose, can I help you? <laughs> Who you calling for? Jones, let's see, let's see. Last name Jones, uh-huh. Uh-oh, I gotta do the remix on you. She not in that file, son, hold on. <laughs> Who is this to you? That's your mother? Okay, I found her. Oh, Lord, hold on, I got to get some paper, tell me she did, hold on. We are sorry to inform you that Miss Jones died. It was a lovely day when she died. How they know it was a lovely day if everybody... What the hell wrong with you? We reading the eulogy. I was just re reaping with her. <laughs> you doing... You doing what? I, I was reaping with her. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, are you there? Yes, yes. We are sorry to inform you that Miss Lee died. It was a lovely day. I don't know how the hell they know that if they say that to everybody. Uh, so I'm supposed to say a prayer. Uh, uh, what the, how they start? Uh, ooh. Our Father, that's it, which art in heaven, Hollywood be thy name. Okay. And then at the bottom, I'm supposed to get deep and say, He's shining out, coming in a Hyundai Ecoli. What did you say? How long will she die? Sign this paper, say she died three years ago. You ain't called and checked on this woman, I've been by here in three years. Please hold while I transfer you to hell. <laughs> Wait a break room, man. Oh, so what's going on, baby? Your baby mama keep calling here, Malik. Calling here? Yes, calling here. Harassing me and driving me crazy. What is she saying? She's cussing me out. Telling me how I'm not letting you be a good father to your son. Well, what did you say? What do you mean, what did I say, Malik? Every single time you go over there, it is nothing but drama with her. Baby, drama. that is my son. This has nothing to do with your son. This has everything to do with her interference in our relationship, and I am sick of this. Listen, I am sick of this, listen, Malik. Listen, we can't let her come between us. 
If we do that, she's winning, baby. Malik, we need to figure out something, and we need to figure out something now. Baby, I have to go see my son. When I married you, Malik, I didn't... I didn't marry into all of this chaos and all of this confusion. Look, I know, okay? Do you love me? Huh? Do you know how happy, how happy you make me? And do you know how much, how much I love you truly? I can't live a day, a day without you. I can't think about it. I just don't want to Cause it's unbelievable love Love on high And it's indescribable joy Just me and mine See what we have In words for us And we thank God That Tell her that. That's all I'm saying. You know, I, 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 I try to tell her, but, um, Good God you know, she, she doesn't even give me an opportunity. She just tells me to leave her alone. So pick so. that up for me. I'll just drop that. Pick all right, up. I sure will. Let me get that for you, ma'am. Oh, jeez. Oh. Woo. All right. You know oh. what's missing from your hair? Hey, hey, hey. What's that? What's that? A strap to go around your chin. Look like you have a helmet on, son. What the hell is that? A helmet? What? You didn't cut your hair, son. Cut my hair? Yes, that's why that woman can't pay attention to you, because you got a hole in the top of your afro. What? Look like you got a black Christmas wreath around your head, son. <laughs> or oh, a bereavement wreath, all you need is rest in peace, cut across the front of it, son. Son, you're losing your hair, you got to let it go. What? Oh, I get it. That's your beard. You just let it grow and combed it all up to the top, that's what they are. No, ma'am. It's, it's actually right in this area right here. Son, that's your sideburns that you let grow all the way up there. You bald at the top, son. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. Do you understand? Let it go? I mean, yes. It's coming back if you look at it real The close. devil is a lie. It ain't coming back. <laughs> son, that woman won't look at you because you're coming at her the wrong way. You need to go get you a nice suit, cut your hair. You ain't got no kids, do you? No, ma'am. No I children. I know because no, them glasses is birth control. Every time a woman see them glasses, they go the other direction. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Son, if you want that woman, then do what I say. Don't, you don't, they ain't the kind of woman that you come walking up to looking like the way you looking. You need a nice suit on, not your uniform. Put your nice suit on, cut your hair, let it go. Let it go, I just... <laughs> cut your hair, son, it's all right. You look like you stuck in the seventies. I don't know if I want to say soul trade. I don't know what the hell I want to say to you. Ooh. How you doing? Hi. You don't see him standing there? See? She ain't even look at you. Huh? That's what I'm telling you. Cut your hair, son. It's all right. 
I just want a woman to accept me for me. You, know you ain't I mean? accepting you for you. The Lord has already told you you are ball and you trying to hold on to something that ain't there. <laughs> but I'm telling you, cut your hair, put on some nice clothes, you'll be all right. But you're going to hear me all day saying, cut your hair. <laughs> cut your hair. Cut, cut my hair. This took me a long time to grow this. <clears throat> How you doing, Miss Carla? Hey, I'm Hey, what you doing here so late? I had a date cancel on me. Oh, you had a date? Hmm. Just, just gonna let another man take you out, huh? Yeah, you men. You men, what's that supposed to mean? It means you're always just about yourselves. Oh, that's, that's not true, uh, Miss Carla. Uh, all men are not the same. Now, the ones I run into are. Well, that sounds like a personal problem. Maybe you're just choosing the wrong man. All right, that's your cue. Get out of my office, Alan. <clears throat> wait, wait, why are you here so late? Well, I just came by to check on everybody. No, no. No man your age is trying to be here volunteering unless he wants something. Now, Miss Carla, look. No, I mean, you being here during the day, I get that. I figure you're trying to get close to me. Hey, man, but, see? Uh, but you being here late at night like this is just creepy, and I don't like it. Now, why are you here? All right. Look, a uh, couple of years ago, my mother passed away, and, and, and I miss her. So I come here, and I sit with these folks, and I listen to them, and I learn, and, and, and it just reminds me of her. I, I'm really sorry, Alan. No, I, I no, 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 no apology needed. Now, I've answered a question for you. Will you please answer a question for me? Yeah, fine. Why do you keep going out with these no-count men, and all they do is break your heart? That's none of your business. My mama wasn't none of your business. <laughs> <clears throat> this is not quite where I thought I would be at this time in my life. Oh, yeah? Where'd you think you'd be at this time in your life? Married. Kids. Except the man I thought would marry me didn't. Oh, you talking about the doctor that was married? How do you know about that? Small facility. Small oh, okay. facility. All right, all right. No, I'm Miss Carla. I, I didn't mean no harm. I'm sorry. I, just, I didn't I... mean no harm. I just want to talk to you. Just, just talk a little bit. Just talk. So. All right. Yes, he was married. And he, he said he was going to leave his wife, and he did, except for when he did, he... Well, he went to another woman. Wow. Now, you know, Miss Carla, you deserve it much better than that. Well, that's what I keep getting. I don't know, somehow I always seem to run into the wrong men. Well, that's because you won't run to me. I don't know you, Alan. It ain't like I ain't been trying to get to know you for the past year and a half. Yeah, right. Why? Because I see your heart. I mean, I like the way you carry yourself, the way you, the way right. you dress, right. the way that's you wear a, your hair, enough. you talk that is so enough. good. I can't do another line from another lion man. No, no, really, this is not a line. It's people from the heart, Miss Carla. It's not a line. Alan, just, just, <clears throat> just please leave me alone, okay? Please. Yes, ma'am. Miss Carla, um, all men are not the same. We're not all the same. All men are not the same. All men are not the same. Then what's wrong with me? I mean, because it has to be me, right? That's, that's what... That's what you're saying, right?
got married, Mama. Look, I brought pictures. I brought pictures and everything. Mama, please talk to me. Please say something. Sam, why do you keep sending all these letters to the hospital? Look, I got a job and I want to keep it. Sorry, I just wanted to see you. Why? You never wanted to see me when I was a kid. So why are you trying to see me now? Look, son, I was young. I was foolish. Man, look, stop sending letters to the hospital. You got me. Yeah, okay. Look, son, wait. Why don't you stay for a little while? Why? Well, how you been? Fine. Well, I read on the internet that you got married. Yeah. Look, you have any kids yet? I have a son. Look, I gotta go. Look, son, I know I haven't been that good of a father to you, but I just wanted you to... What? What, huh? That you sorry? I already know how sorry you are. Look, my mother died in my arms, and you didn't even have the decency to come to the hospital to see her. You were too busy with your wife and kids, and now they all drug addicts and in prison. So you want to reach out to the one that made it. Well, I don't have a thing to say to you at all. Nothing. Sam, I just wanted you to know that I love you. That I'm sorry. Look, don't write or call me again. You got me. Sam, I'm sorry. Sam! Oh, mama! Mama! Hey, Mama! Rebecca! <laughs> mama! How are you, Rebecca? I'm good. I'm good. Now, come on. I'm getting you out of here. No, I'm going to stay here. It's for the best. Oh, so Jennifer is still your favorite. It ain't got nothing to do with my favorite. Where will we live? Mama, I have an apartment now. You still with that boy? Look, I got my life together. You still with that boy? Baby, I can't live with you. That man's a drug dealer. Mama, not anymore. He had you out there selling your body for dope. What I look like moving in with the two of you? A fool. Mama, look, we are both clean now, okay? We both went through rehab and everything is better. You would know that if you took my phone call. Baby, I did all I could for you. And now I'm trying to do something for you. I'm sorry. You mortgaged my house that your father and I worked all our lives for. And now I don't have nothing. Your sister had to come in and pay it off. And because that evil old husband of hers don't like me, he had to move me in here. Get it. Mama, I didn't mortgage your house. Baby, you still lying. You want to convince me you're clean to tell the truth? Tell me that you mortgaged my house. Mama, I didn't. You spent my money on dope. Mama, I didn't. Get out. And don't come back until you can tell the truth. Bye, Mama. Just walk 
Somebody down here. What's your name? Lee. Lee. <laughs> Leave me alone. Well, I'm just trying to be nice. Well, don't be. Well, this is a small facility. Lots of people have died here. Dead, 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 dead. Is that supposed to make me feel good? Well, I'm just trying to make small talk with you. Mm -hmm. Let me figure, try to figure out how to tell you this. I don't want to talk to you at all. Fine. Uh, you been crying? What's it to you? Well, I know what it feels like to be left here to die. Your children don't come and visit you anymore, and you feel like you're at the end of the road. There you go. Trying to make me feel good again. Look, I'm sorry. Here. What's this? Oh. Dry your eyes. Thank you. You're welcome. You know it's best sometime to just accept it. I don't want to accept it. This is not how my life was supposed to turn out. I wanted to die in the house my husband and I lived in for 57 years. This is not where I was supposed to end up. Yeah, I used to think the same things. It's so unfair. You were caught all your life. And then your children come in and leave you here. And I don't even make enough in social security to live on my own. It's just wrong. Hey, hey, Dahlia, you talked to her for me? No, I didn't say anything you, to her. You, you went in there, you could have said a little bit more <laughs> than, hey, <laughs> easy rest for time at home, we're better living. Uh, uh no, 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 I'll, I'll get her. I'll get her, thank you. Hattie! Hattie! <gasps> Hattie! Get inside, please! That's the fourth call I've gotten this week. You do not want to get sick. I was trying to make a run for it. It's gonna be all right. I don't feel like I am. Oh, God. You got to get me through this. No, it's gonna be all right. Don't worry about it, it'll oh, be fine. Oh, no. 
go and try. Go and try. All right. trying to calm her down. Now, you calm down. She was upset. Well, she won't be upset if I kill her, now, will she? Touch my man again. He'll touch him again. Woman, I ain't dating you. Now, sit your behind down somewhere. So all you got to do is tell me one time. You know I do what you say. <laughs> Not on me, Hattie. Over there. Why you acting all funny and everything, Carson? Ain't nobody acting funny. Sit your behind down. What's wrong with it anyhow? The same thing that was wrong with you when your sister and them dropped you off up in here. You remember how you felt? Now say something nice to her. Something nice. Hattie. I just get all discombobulated when I see you with other women. Hattie, I ain't your man. You is my man. I don't want him. Oh, we're good then. We can have a conversation then. You don't know the story? It was a cold and rainy night. The winds was blowing with a vengeance. The owls was howling as if to let the world Hattie! Owls don't howl. They hoot. Now get to the point. Oh, yeah, he right. I'm going to have to remember that. Mm-hmm. Owls don't howl, they hoot. <laughs> it was two years ago. Last week, my sister brought me here. She just dropped me off. She dropped me off like I was nobody. At first, I thought it was a joke, so I sat at that door and I waited and I waited. And I've been waiting ever since. It ain't something you get used to, you just, you just learn to deal with it. I had to ask God to help me. And he doing it every day. Teaching me how to pray. Seemed like yesterday. I was in my prime. Before I knew it, I was old. Staring at the end of my time Where did the time go? Where did my youth go to? How did I get here? Looking at it, I'm almost through Oh, life It's but a moment You come and go, come and go You come and go like the wind We all have an appointed time Oh, until we meet the end, you better make the most of it. Live your best life every day. Gotta live for God. Gotta share your heart. Save what you need to see. Now, yesterday I was young, but now I'm old. Oh, oh, oh. We show fast, raise my children the best I could. This is not how I thought my life would be. Now I'm in a home all alone where no, 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 no one, no one, yeah. We all 
shame. I appreciate you trying to make me feel better. Hey, hey, Dahlia, you talked to her for me? No, I didn't say What's anything mean? to her. You, you were in there, you could have said a little bit more <laughs> than hey. <laughs> Easy rest, for time at home, we're better living. Uh, uh, no, 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 I'll, I'll get her. I'll get her, thank you. Hattie! Hattie! <gasps> Hattie! Get inside, please! That's the fourth call I've gotten this week. You do not want to get sick. I was trying to make a run for it. Yeah. Yeah, after, after you cut them, they don't want to talk to you no more. But before you cut them, you need to get to know them. Yeah. Is she act right, I even might let her share a box of my Fruity Pops. No, don't share that with her, honey, because I tell you, you get people addicted to that stuff. That's just like crack to you. Don't share that with her. Well, you don't treat everybody the same That's way. That's just like crack. It don't treat everybody the same way. Yeah. <laughs> you got that right, though. You want a bowl? You got that right. <laughs> no, <Nah. laughs> it is really some nice people in the world today. Hattie, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Last time I checked, I had 5,300 Fruity Pops in this box. I ain't messing with you with that darn cereal. Ooh. God, somebody got to die. What you gonna do about it? Girl, you try to get killed. I'm just gonna walk it out. I'm just gonna walk it out. I'm just gonna walk it out. <laughs> now that lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep me. And she should die before she wake. I'm gonna wake that hell up and kill her again. <laughs> Easy rest retirement where people are dying to get the hell out of here. Can I help you? Boy, did you listen to me? Let me ask you a question. Did you get your hair cut? You put on a nice suit? Well, come on. Yeah, she here. I see her, and there's supposed to be a wall there, but I can see her. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so come on. Come on. Bye. <laughs> that boy crazy about that girl. What you doing standing at door? My daughter said she was coming by. Your daughter, the one that was by here yesterday that I saw? Oh, no. I'm talking about my other daughter, Jennifer. My favorite daughter. Your favorite? Mm hmm Honey, you can't have no favorites with your children. Because the very one you put all your faith and hope in will be the one to hurt you and let you down the most. I'm telling you now. Well, I love all my children equally. But that Rebecca, she been out there in the streets doing some of everything. And she fell out of favor with you? Mm hmm Glad you ain't God. Honey, honey, children are individuals. See, that's when parents make their mistake. They think just because they give their child the exact same thing, the exact same amount of love, the exact same everything, they're going to turn out the exact same way. Children are individuals. They have their own individual experiences. You are not their only influences on this earth. Do you understand? That's why you have to find out which it's the best way to get the best results out of your child. Per child gets a different result. Do you understand? Each child needs their own different result. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Well, let me break it down for you if you don't understand. One of your children may have say, you know what, just sit there and don't move. That child will just sit there all day long and not move. The other child, you got to say, if you move, I'm going to break your neck, your knuckles, your finger, your throat, and choke you half to death. Yep. But the child don't move. That's right. So both children didn't move. You got the results you wanted from both of them, That's but right. you had to go about it in different directions. That's Do you right. understand? That's all I'm saying. Children are individuals. That's why you have to be careful who you sleep with. <laughs> Being had a baby with somebody you ain't met their whole family and your child is crazy as hell like that cousin they've been trying to hide. Yeah. Yeah, a, lot of a lot of parents love their children, but they don't like them. <laughs> That's all right. I didn't even know that was possible. But you can love your child and not like them at all. Mm -hmm. And somebody back there clapping right now. Stop all that clapping. Stop all that clapping. <laughs> And if you sitting with that child right now, you better look straight ahead. Close your eyes. Just look straight ahead. You hear what I'm telling you? You're right. I know I'm right. You can't blanket parent and think that both children are going to turn out the same way to individuals. Mm. It's like bringing strangers in your house. Honey what, honey, what you doing up in here? Well, my daughter Jennifer got married and her husband didn't like me. That didn't answer my question, though. They kept my house. 
Who kept your house? Jennifer and her husband. Honey, you got to explain this to me because I'm getting more and more confused. I know. <laughs> see, see, my other daughter that's on drugs mortgaged my house. Uh -huh. And Jennifer, the good daughter, paid it off. Okay. And then they didn't have no room for me. And they moved me here. Okay, let me see if I understand this. So, so, so you got a daughter that's on crack? Yes. That mortgaged your house and you didn't know it? Mm-mm. And then you tell your other daughter, Jennifer, and she come up in there and she pay it off. Mm-hmm. But then she don't have no room for you in your house. And she move you out of your house. Yeah. And that's the good one. <laughs> child, I take my chances with the crackhead. I don't know what the hell, no, child. What's the address? We need to go do a drive-by. Let's go. Oh, What's no. the address? No, 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 no. Uh-uh. See, I understand. They had to sell their house to pay my mortgage. Honey, sit down. Let me explain something to you. Somebody done ran the game on you. <laughs> Ain't nobody finna go give up their nice, comfortable house to come live in your house unless you have the nicer house. Yeah. Your daughter has run a game on you, honey. Is your house nicer than hers? Yeah. That's why the hell she was in your house. Don't think she did you no favors. So don't sit here making excuses for this child. Well, it ain't her. That's an excuse. Who is it? It's her husband. How is it her husband? He pay all the bills. I don't give a damn how many bills you pay. You ain't finna put my mama out her house. <laughs> now, that don't make no sense to me at all. You got to explain that to me. No, see, you don't understand. What now? I don't understand? Well, when she was little, a lot of things happen to her. I just need to be there for her. Please don't tell me you're one of them parents that believe anything your child say anytime they say it, however they say it. Oh, I can't stand parents like that. They don't go and verify nothing. They just believe what their child say. See, I, I believe in trust, but verify. Do you hear me? Because <laughs> just because it's your child, they are capable of making mistakes. That's why you have to get all the information before you go run to their defense. I know somebody like this now. The principal called and said the child did it. The school teacher called, say the child did it. The janitor called, say the child did it. The bus driver called, say the child did it. Homeless man on the street found a phone and called and said the child did it. A chihuahua was walking past and he did it, he did it, he did it. And she didn't believe nothing. And when you do that to a child, you are setting yourself up for failure because you're going to find yourself when that child grow up on the witness stand, sitting there trying to convince 12 members of his peers that he did not commit the crime, that you believe he did not do it. Do you hear what I'm telling you, honey? You're right. I know it. I know this is what you got to understand about children, honey. Hear me clearly when I say this. You cannot do that to a child. You cannot empower a child that way. Find out the truth first. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Yeah. That's why I look at all these parents. You can't, you can't do that to a child. That is crippling. Like all these parents that give their child everything they ask for. Mm -hmm. That is the worst thing you can do for a child is to give them everything they ask for. And I know what it is. You feel guilty. See, a right. lot of parents feel guilty because the child went through something. You weren't there. You were supposed to you be there. You were working. You had to do this to hell with that. The Bible gave you one commandment. Be fruitful and multiply. The rest of it is on the damn child to figure out what they are going to do. But what I'm saying is this, you, when you do that to a child, you cripple them, you handicap them by giving them everything they want. They don't know what it's like in the real world. I remember Cora came home one day talking about she wanted $5 because the neighbor, the neighbor had given her daughter $5. Mm. Well, she a single mama, she gave her $5. I said, I don't care, you my child. I don't care what's happening next door. This is what goes on in this house. If you want anything in this house, you got to work for it. That's right. She said, that's fine. I'll just do what I got to do. I just need the $5 because I want to go buy me some toys. Okay, fine. What I need to do, go wash the dishes. Okay, great. She washed the dishes, come back in there with a hand out for the five dollars. I say, baby, don't work that way. You don't just get it just because you asked for it. Now you got to go clean the closet. So she cleaned that closet up all night long. Next morning, she said, I get my five dollars fine. No, baby, you don't get a check. When you get home, you still got more chores to do. I need you to wash some clothes. When you come up in here, you're going to clean that oven. Mm -hmm. So she came back, she washed clothes clean. Can I, can I have my five dollars? No, baby, can't have it yet. This went on Monday, this went on Tuesday. By Wednesday, she had cut the grass, mowed the lawn, changed the lawn mower. By Thursday, she had washed the car and changed my oil. You understand? <laughs> and by Friday, she was so tired, she said, I don't even want the money now. I don't even want it. <laughs> I said, no, baby, but that's how I work in the real world. You don't work like a dog, and by Friday, it's payday. So uh -huh. here it is. <laughs> so I'm going to make you work like a dog. <laughs> and then I'm going to dangle a little carrot in front of you on Friday so you'll come back on Monday. So here's your money on Friday. And she said, thank you. Then she went to count it. It was $3.18. 
She said, I asked for $5. I said, well, hell, I took taxes out of it. That's how it is in the real world. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what children need to know, honey. That's, yeah. what, children need. That's what children need to understand. They need to know the value of a dollar. Just because you have it to give it to them don't mean that they should have it. Do you understand? You're right. Because you do that to them as children. When they grow up, they have no sense of nothing. They leave your house and go get married to somebody. They think that that man or that woman is supposed to give them everything that mama or daddy did. That ain't the real world. You want something, you got to go your ass to work. That's how it work around here. You hear me? That's right. Because it's crazy. I just look at these people, grown folks, grown 40-year-olds sitting there counting on mama and daddy and all that stuff. That is crazy. Mm -mm. You cannot empower a child to that much. Everybody on this earth, let me tell you something about guilt. Guilt will mess you up and your child. You can't let guilt rule how you raise. Because you'll find yourself doing things you ain't supposed to. God has designed a midnight for everybody on this earth to go through. He has designed it. He didn't allow, he did not make it happen, but he allows it to happen. All right? And the reason for that midnight for you to go through it is not to destroy you. It is to make you stronger and make you better. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you're not supposed to despise it. You're just supposed to walk on through it. Now, if God has designed a midnight for your child as much as you love your child, and you come running there, rescue, and every time they go through, every time they go through something, you there to see them through it, then you are not helping them at all. You are blocking the thing that God has set up for them to make them stronger. I don't think you're following me. I'm following. <laughs> Let me break it down to you this way. If God has designed something for them to go through that's going to make them stronger, and every time they go through it, they, they, they can come to you and get it, then what do they need God for? You become their God. Do you understand? And what you need to know about him, he's a jealous God and he will have no other God mm -hmm. before him. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. I, know it's, I know it hurts to have your child go through something. I know it's tough. I know it's hard to watch them go through. But honey, you have to let them bump their head every now and then so that they can become full-grown adults who know how to handle anything, who can stand up on their feet. Your job is not to keep them from, from the cradle to the grave. Your job is to keep them from the cradle, let them grow up and figure out how the hell they're going to get to the grave they self. Do you understand? Mm. I never thought about you it like that. You ain't been thinking about much is all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? You I got understand. to let, let your children grow up. And as long as I'm on this subject, I'm going to say this because I think it just needs to be said. What? All of y'all who got these grown children living in your house, I got four words for you. Put that ass out. understand that. Now, now, I'm not talking about all of them, because see, that's what, listen, if you're going through something and you have a little financial trouble, or you're going through a divorce, or things are tough right now, you need to go home for a while, that's what family is for. That's right. To be there for you, mm -hmm. for a little while. For a little while. Yeah, because yeah, when you come back to my house, I'm like a landlord. I want a move-in date, and I want a move-the-hell-out date, too. Yeah. <laughs> and don't come up in there talking about you need a week when you know you need six months trying to fool me. Because if you tell me you need a week on the seventh day, I'm a rest. <laughs> And on the eighth day, I'm gonna pack you the hell up out of there, is all I'm saying. <laughs> you understand what I'm telling you? I understand, Miss Because the thing about it is this I'm not talking about them children, I'm talking about them 40 year olds that's living in your basement. Yes. Talking about, Mama, can I borrow your car? Mm -mm. Hell no, you can't borrow my car. Mm -mm. you 40 years old. <laughs> that's right. But a lot of parents done empower them, then they wonder why all the other grown children are mad, because you got the same child keep coming back to the house over and over again. You keep these supposed to be the best years of your life, and you letting this child come in and ruin that moment for you. That's crazy as hell. I don't understand. Right. Put them out. Put them out. It's like an eagle. Huh. You know what an eagle do? I love, I love nature. See, God teaches us through nature. This is what an eagle do. When the poor eagle have a little chick chickies, uh -huh. eagle make a nest out of thorns. Why you do that? Yeah, so, so when the babies come, they, they take the feathers and they put it down on top of the thorns so they're comfortable. Mm. So when the babies come, they're so comfortable. But when the babies stay too long, the eagle fans the feathers. I guess it don't hurt to be nice every now and then. Yes, I know it's gonna be all right. You're a nice lady. You need somebody to talk to, I'll talk to you sometime. Well, thank you. Look at you trying to be nice to somebody. Hey, that's good. That's good. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you, honey. I'm going now. I'm going, Hattie. Oh. Don't be mad handling her like that. What the hell wrong with you? Now let him push me again. I got some for him. I love you, but I'll kill him right here and send him on to glory. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> 
Ma, she, she, she a really nice lady. I told you that yesterday. That's why you have to get to know people before you cut them. <laughs> so all that's left in the nest is thorns. So no matter which way that little eagle in there go, they can't get comfortable. And if they still won't leave, she take them and she throw them out the nest. What? <laughs> yes, she do. And watch them. They be flapping and flapping. Then right before they hit the ground, she go in and swoop down, pick them up, and bring them back up. You understand? Did she take back up? Do she go in there and put some more feathers? Hell no. You know what she do? She kick them out again. <laughs> and they go to flapping and flapping and flapping. She run down and catch them. By the third time she do that, they flying on their own. Do you understand? Mm. Sometime, honey, you just got to make it uncomfortable for your child to get the hell up out of your house. Take the feathers out the nest. Start with the television and work your way to the PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> do you hear what I'm telling you? That's good. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Now, I'm gonna tell you something about this daughter of yours. You got two of them. The one that's on them drugs. Mm -hmm. I have never met one child in this whole life that said, I wanna be, you ask a child what they wanna be. They say, a doctor, a lawyer. They, they, they never say, I wanna be a drug addict. Mm -mm. Something happens to people in their life. That's why you can't never judge nobody. Cause something happens that make people go in certain directions. And wherever it happens, if you can take them back to that point, you can take them to the healing. But you got to figure out how to get them back to where they went off track. Do you understand? Yes. Every time there's a train derailment, they want to know where the incident happened. You got to take them back to the incident to make them heal. Hmm. Talk to your daughter, child. Don't judge her. Now, she going to lie. I know. Yeah, yeah, a crackhead a lie when the truth will do. Yes. But you talk to her. And then that other daughter of yours, the one I want to see all the papers that you signed for her to have your house, tell her we're going to come pay her a visit. Me, you, and my lawyer. You and your lawyer? Yeah, he in this purse. <laughs> He's with the firm of Smith and Wesson Esquire. Yes. <laughs> you understand? I now understand. go on call. You ain't supposed to be on the phone. I'm gonna talk to this girl because I, I know this boy on his way over here. Go on talk. I'm I'm keep her busy. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> what you doing? Oh, I was talking to the universe. Oh, child, the universe. Wow. Oh, okay. Oh. And then I was going to partake of the fruit of the Ignatius tree. The, ig the who tree? The Ignatius tree. The igna Ignatius? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. What'd that do? It brings me calm and balance. Mm, another kind of tree do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> How long you been on this uh, spiritual journey? Oh, about two months. You been on the journey two months? Yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. That's good. How, what, what got you on this spiritual journey? What do you mean? I mean, something had to get you on it. I mean, you ain't just start on it all along, you know. Because Daddy tell me you used to go to church. Yeah. And then you left. Yeah. And went on a journey yes, into the universe. Mm -hmm. Going where no man has gone before. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Wow. What happened make you do that? You know, usually when a woman go through a breakup, she'll cut all her hair off, change it. You know, you know how y'all do, yeah. I mean, you know how we do. We all change. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know how we do, we change up something, you know. Uh, I, I think it was just time. Thought it was time? Uh-huh. Mm, ain't nothing happened. Ain't have nothing to do with that man you was messing around with, the married man. The one Hannah was talking about, who, who left his wife and then didn't come marry you um, when married another woman? Uh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, because there was a third spoke in the wheel and you ain't know about it? Was he in the church? Yes, ma'am. He was a member. A member of the church. See, there you go. Now, now it all makes sense. Man, break your heart, you get mad at God. Honey, you can't compare God to man. Any man, any woman, any human being on this earth is capable of breaking your heart no matter how much they love you because we're all human. We all make mistakes. Do you understand? So you can't blame God on that. You can't go running out of the church because a man hurts you. If you do that, you'll never find peace. Do you hear me? You got to know God for God and man for man. He's not a man that he should lie. Do you understand? I, I mean, I, I hear you, but I, I couldn't go back into that church. Why? I mean, I, I know I was wrong. I take responsibility for that. But those people in that church judged me. I couldn't go yeah, back in there. Yeah, that bothered me about a lot of churches, honey. A lot of folks in church, a lot of folk in church, they quick to forget, so quick to forget where they come from. 
mm. like they always had it together. They did be, they, like they can't remember four or five years ago when they were struggling trying to get through something. That's what bothered me. People come into church and they're hurting and they're broken. Then they leave there even more hurt because they came to the church looking for help. And somebody up in there that made them so upset and worse than what they were. But this is what you need to understand about the church. Honey. The church is just like a hospital. When people go to the hospital, see, this is why people have their misconceptions. This is why you mess up because you think church is supposed to be this perfect place. It's not. The mm -hmm. church is a place for people who need something. Like the hospital. If you have a cold, you go to the hospital. You need surgery, you go to the hospital. There are departments for everything. If you're in an emergency, you go to the emergency room. If you're in intensive care, you go to ICU. All of that is in the hospital. The church is the same way. When you go to the church, you go up in there looking for healing. Whatever you need, whatever is surgeries you need in your life, you're asking God to help you with. You understand? So when you go up in there, just like when you go to the hospital, you're looking to see the doctor. Don't go up in there looking for nobody but a doctor. When you, hear, you hear me? So when you go to, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> when you go to the hospital, you go in there looking for a doctor. So all I'm telling you is that when you go to church, you better go up in there looking for God. Because mm -hmm. anything else is up in there. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. Let me make it a little clearer for you. Just like people go to the ICU in the emergency room, there are all these little clicks and little things in the hospital. There are all them little clicks in the church. That's why the liars can find the liars. The whoremongers can find the whoremongers. It's already up in there. Do you understand? Yes, I do. That's, that's why when you go up in there, you better have your eyes on God and nothing else. Do you understand? I do understand. So are you going to get yourself hurt, honey? Keep your eye on God and you won't make no mistakes. Just like Peter when he was walking on that water and Jonah and that whale passed right by him and messed him up and he started sinking. You got to understand that, honey. Okay. I'm telling you, it was free will. I saw it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's been two months since I've been to church, but I don't know if it was that. Oh, okay. Well, honey, you don't read your Bible. Oh, okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I, all I'm, I'm telling you, honey, is keep your eye on God. That's all I want you to understand. I understand that. It's just I'm so tired of getting hurt. I mean, I thought he was the one. I was praying he was the one. Hmm. You was praying that the married man was the one for you? <laughs> you really have been eating the fruit of the ignorant ass tree right there, honey. Okay, I, I never heard it out loud like yeah, that Yeah, see, that's before. what's wrong with a lot of people. They don't say stuff out loud so they can mm -hmm, hear it. You need right. to hear stuff said out loud, honey. You're you right. can't pray that a married man. God does things in decency and in order. God don't hook you up with somebody that's already hooked up. And let me tell you, you got to be careful with them people, honey, that you meet that it's already married. Or, and I don't care if it's a woman, a man, whatever. If you meet somebody that's in a relationship, married all together, you got to be careful with them because they are thieves and they don't even know it. Thieves. They are thieves. They, they, they have come to steal the best thing that God has given you, your youth. Because hmm. see, they are, you, you, you'll be hooked up in a relationship with them for 15, 20 years and realize you missed the best days of your life. Because hmm. see, when you're in your 20s, you think that's cute. Oh yeah, he married, but it's, it's all right. He on my, I got my list. And he got everything I need on my list. He's tall, he's handsome, he make this much money. We're going to get us a nice house in the suburb. We're going to live in Buckhead. They're going to die for better. We're going to go over here. You know, you have your list, your five-page list. Hmm. When you're in your 20s. You get in your 30s, you start playing scratch-off with that list. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you get to them 40s and 50s, that five-page list has become five words. <laughs> Just let him be breathing. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, Do you hear what I'm telling you? <laughs> you got wow. to understand that, honey. You can't let people... Like, like ain't nothing sadder to me than to see a 50-year-old woman in the club. <laughs> Down at the end of the bar with the same dress on that the 20-year-old got on at the other end of the bar. <laughs> Talk about, I still got it. No, you don't. Time to go home, honey. Go home. <laughs> but look, I don't judge her. Because some, somebody stole something from her, and she's trying to get it back. Somebody stole the best years of her life and she's still trying to hold on to it. Do you understand? Uh, yes, yes. That's why you can't let people steal stuff from you, honey. Them people are thieves. You, you got to do better than that in your own life. You hear me? I hear you. I just, you know, I'm here and I see these people and it makes me nervous. I'm oh, yeah, scared. I'm going to be just like them. I know it because you look at your life sometime and you look like you got more years behind you than you have in front of you. And it's a scary time, and a lot, of, a lot of folk go through it. More women go through it than men, where they get to the point where they realize they don't have everything they have. They don't have the love that they wanted. They don't, they're not married yet. They have, but they got money, got the house, got the career, got all that stuff, but they don't have the love. Mm. And that's a scary place to find yourself, especially when you're looking at getting older. You know, but you have to understand something. Sometimes being alone does not necessarily mean being lonely. 
You know I mean? And you have to learn how to be by yourself. And sometimes God will leave you by yourself until you learn how to be by yourself. Because, see, if, if you ain't ready to be by yourself, then people will really make a fool out of you. Because if you don't know how to be alone, people will be able to run any kind of game on you they want. Because they can threaten you by walking out the door. Right, right. If you don't do this, I'm going to leave. If you don't deal with this, I'm going to leave. You understand? understand. And, and there are a lot of people that a lot of women say, like, okay, well, please don't leave. To the hell with that. <laughs> you better not tell me you leave because I would have packed before you get I'm leaked out of your mouth. Huh. Wow. There'll be a cab outside waiting on you. Do you hear me? Wow. I got the gift of goodbye, honey. I will pack you the hell up so quick you want your head to spin. Mm. Do you um, hear what I'm telling you? I hear what you're saying. That's what I'm saying to you. You got to understand it because it, you, you can't all these lists and all this stuff about being lonely, got to have this guy. Like my aunt, I'm going to tell you, this is a true story. My aunt was in love with this man, love with the man. He was perfect on her list, everything. But he wasn't no good for her. But there was another man she never paid any attention to because he wasn't on the list. Everything about the list was wrong with him. The list say tall, he was short. <laughs> the list say handsome, he was The list say thick, he was fat. <laughs> and she ain't paid no attention to him, but the man loved her with the purest love. She, did, he, she didn't even know how much he loved her. And he would just do things for her. She had four boys she was raising by herself, mm -hmm. going to work and every day and night. And he, he was uh, watch her. When it was raining, he'd go pick up because she didn't have a car. He went and bought a car, a little ragged car, and left it at the house one day. She was so happy to have that car. Mm -hmm. She thought it got the best gas mileage in the world. She didn't know he would come in the middle of the night and just fill it up for her. Aww. Little things like that. She'd work all day, he'd rub her feet. This man loved her purely. The man that she was in love with kept breaking her heart. One night she got tired of saying, I ain't finna deal with that no more. And her and that man spent some time, had a beautiful night. She fell in love with him. Aww. Seven years he chased her. He died the next year. Oh. Wasted all of that time. Do you understand how people come to steal things from me? Wasted all that time being hooked up with some fool and missed the best man in her life. To this Aww. day she'll tell you that was the best man in my life. Do you oh, understand? Wow. Yes, yes, I, that's sad. Yeah, but it's all right, honey. That's why you got to wait on God. See, see, you got to give up them lists and all of that stuff. You know, I know they didn't think like a man to say make your list, but I don't believe you ought to have a list. You understand? So you got to get to a point where you just say, you know what, let me explain something to you. Whatever you got for me, God, I'm going to take it. Because sometimes mm -hmm. love don't come the way you want it to come. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Sometimes love have a hole in the top of the afro. Sometimes love don't have a six pack, it have a Dunlap. Uh, a Dunlap? Yeah, the belly Dunlapped over the belt. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You gotta get it the way it come, you understand? I am. I and let me talk to you about this universe thing, because I just started hearing about this universe stuff about 20 years ago. Before that, I ain't never heard nothing about this universe. This thing is scaring me, because people take the Bible, and they mix it up with a little this and a little that, and then they mix up this and mix up that. Before you know it, you all confused. They got Christians walking around talking about the universe all mixed up with all this stuff. Don't even know that they're on a whole nother path. Don't even know that you are off base with what the Bible say because you over there talking about the universe and all this other stuff. Because I don't understand. I ain't read nowhere where the universe was nailed to a cross. And I don't know why you would sit around worshiping the universe when you can worship the creator of the universe. Do you hear me? That's all I'm saying to you. I understand. You hear me? Go back to what you know. Go back to what worked for your mama and your grandmama and great granddad and grandpa. That was Jesus. They was up all night calling on the name of Jesus, walking the floor, praying for you, laying hands on you in the middle of the night. When you got sick, they was calling on Jesus. They had the prayer meetings in the house. There ain't nothing wrong with that name. It still works. He ain't gotten away from us. We getting away from him. Do you hear what I'm telling you? So you got, to, you got to get rid of that, honey. You got to go back to church. You got to go back to what you know. You got to go back to your roots. Go back to church. I ain't going, but you go right on up in there and have yourself a good time. Oh, now, wait a minute. Now, you just said all of that about me going to church, and you won't go? No, not until they get a smoking section in the bar up in there. I'm not going. In the church? Yes, y'all having communion. I'm having Patron. What's up? Uh-uh. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, I don't think I'm going. <laughs> You hear what I'm telling you? I, I do hear what you're saying, Thank and I, you. you've given me a lot to think about, and I'm going to pray about it. You're going to pray about it to who? To Jesus. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hmm. Wow. You know, you got to do something nice for people. That's why I came up here to talk to you. 
Oh, just thank to get you so you, much. You so well. You got to do something nice. Now, do something nice. Me, go on, sign this paper so I can get on the phone. Oh, you so by the book. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but thank you, though. You're very thank welcome, you. honey. You're right. very welcome. Whoa. my head, I walked in the wall. <laughs> Can you feel that? That's air on your head. <laughs> See? Now go on up in there and shut it down, son. Walk right. up in there, you tell this woman, I'd already tilled the soil for you, she ready. All, right. All you gotta do is walk up in there and say, look here, baby, we going out. You can do it. You can do it. <clears throat> Miss Carla. I came here this evening to ask you if you would allow me to take you out for an evening of pleasure so that I might treat you exactly the way that a woman should be treated. Now, what do you say? <clears throat> um, I, I, I don't know what to say. I mean... Miss Carla, why are you settling to be all alone when I'm right here waiting for you? Tell me why you keep pushing me away when I'm right here for you? Lady, just run, run to me. I'll take care of you. You work fast. The wedding was beautiful, Mom. I wish you could have been there. I miss you, Mom. Did you come to take me home? You're talking today. Yes, did you come to take me home? No, Mama, you gotta stay here. I can't take care of you. I mean, with my job and the kids and, and Frank is off in Afghanistan, I can't. I want to go home. I know, but this is your home now. I don't like it here. I know, but this is the best that I could do. Fine, the water is on. No, Mama, please don't go. Please stay with me. Stay with me, how are you? I'm fine, it just gets chilly here at night. I'll be sure they bring you more blankets then, okay? Thank you, nurse. 
Mom, I'm Sue Ellen. Who? Mom, I'm Sue Ellen. You know me. Please remember me. Look at me. You know me. Where are your brothers? They're busy, Mama. Well, fine then. I won't play with you or your toys anymore, Carol. Mom, Carol is your sister. That figures. I love you. Do you hear me? Are we in Hawaii at the beach house? No, Mama. Yeah, hear I talking? She talks sometimes, but she doesn't know who I am or that I'm here. This is so hard. I need her in my life. I just want to talk with her, and I want her to talk to me. Why? <laughs> because I love her. This old selfish woman? She wasn't selfish. She had to be selfish. No, she wasn't selfish at all. You mean this woman would give of, of herself to other people? Yes, all the time. Well, y'all must not have had no good memories at all, not one. Yes, we did. We had great memories. And she was a good woman? Yes. When she was in the right mind, she was a good woman and she wasn't selfish and all that other stuff? Yes. Huh. I thought she was selfish as hell. Why? Because of you. Me? Yeah. Because you sit here 10, 12 hours a day. Only a selfish person would want you sitting here all this time like this, honey. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? This woman, let me hear me get good when I say this. If this was me, I would not want my daughter sitting here all this time. You got children to raise. You got a whole life to live. And anybody who loved you would not want you doing this to yourself. I know, but it's hard. I understand that, but you, you know what's unfair? For you to reduce her life to this moment. You looking at the end, honey. You got to remember the whole total life. Got to remember all the joy and all the peace. And you got to give each one of them the same amount of energy. You understand? You can't just reduce it to this moment. This woman, if she wasn't selfish, she wouldn't want that. I know, I know I wouldn't want Cora to sit here. First of all, Cora ain't finna sit here all this time like this. Unless there's a snack machine up under that bed, Cora ain't finna do that. It's <laughs> good to see you smiling, honey. Thank you. But you got to learn how to start to let go. How do I let go? Well, you know, already started, and I tell you how, you put her in a nice place that where people can take care, and they take good care of her here. I've watched them, understand? Mm -hmm. But you got to learn how to start to let go, little by little, that's how you do it, bit okay. by bit. Instead of staying 10 hours one day, maybe you'll come, you'll stay nine. You know, and then you might relapse and come 12. See, you go back and forth when you're going through this kind of stuff. You just have to go with it. But it, you got children to raise and a life to live. And I showed this woman would not want this, honey. Let go bit by bit. Maybe one day you'll skip a whole day. Then you find it easier to do. You hear me? I hear you. But I, she, it's good she's loved. A lot of folk don't have people to love them when they get to this part in their life. So it's good that she loved them, good you're here for them. That don't mean that you don't love her because you ain't here. You hear me? Forgive yourself, honey. You keep talking about, I want this, I want, I, 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 that's about you. That ain't about her. You understand? I understand. Okay. All right, honey. Medea? Yes. Will you please say a prayer before you go? Girl, you ain't seen none of my DVD, have you? Time to go. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Y'all going out? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you, and feel free to volunteer anytime. And feel free to hear me saying, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Try to get that note. <laughs> Where's he at? Hey, son. Hey, man, you think I'm playing with you? Look, I told you not to call my job again. I didn't call your job. Yeah, you did. Does my job look like a joke to you? I got a family to take care of that I refuse to neglect like you did to me and my mama. Son, I didn't call your yes, job. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. My boss said that you called. 
and asked me to bring you some cereal. What? Daddy, you ain't sleep. You call that boy a job ass for cereal? So what? He got money. What'd you say when he called that? Bring home a box of cereal, please. <laughs> hey, son. 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 Did you know what was going on with this man and your mama? No, ma'am. I just know he wasn't there. Wasn't there for you. This what you want? You, stand up. This what you want? No. This no, is what you want? No, ma'am. This boy need to be with his baby. And you having trouble with that woman that won't even talk to her. But you and that baby mama are adults. Act like y'all got some damn sense. Call each other and have a conversation so that this man can spend time with his child. Every man need to be with their child. Do you understand? That ain't got nothing to do with you. You don't want that child growing up because you can't be adult enough to let him spend some time with his daddy. You don't want him growing up with that on his mind thinking his daddy didn't want him because of you. Do you understand? It's unfair for you to have to, him to have to make a choice between you and his child. That's all I'm going to say to you. That's all I got to say about that. Now you, this man wasn't there for you? No. Never? Never. Your mama raised you? Yes, she did. How's your life? My life is great. You got a good job? I have a great job. Got a great job. Oh, you married? Yes, ma'am, I am, and I have a son. Yeah, you good father? I'm a great father. Good husband? And a great husband. So your mom was good to you? She was great. Took you to church? Yes, ma'am, she you did. You saved? Yes, I am. Why are you mad? <laughs> why I don't know. You can see there's a little scripture in the Bible that say all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You know what that means? Everything that you have been through will work together for your good. Everything, if you let it. Everything will work together for your good if you call and love the Lord. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Do you hear what I'm saying to you, son? Everything. You ever thought maybe this man wasn't supposed to be there? If he had been in your life, you might have turned out to be somebody else. But because he wasn't, look how you turned out. God had you covered, son. This is what I want you to understand. Ain't no sense of you sitting around here being mad. This man taught you everything you needed to know. You know how he taught you? In reverse. <laughs> you do the opposite of what he did and you have your answers. Do you hear what the hell I'm saying? <laughs> and you should have been there. You should have been there. See, a lot of times you go out there, you're doing all that hoeing around and playing around, doing this and doing that, and then you grow up and you get old and you're wondering why, why you're there by yourself because you wasn't there for your child. Now you got one foot in the grave and you're trying to get, make some peace. And it's up to him whether he want to give you the peace or not. But son, let me tell you something. If you want to get even with this man, be nice to him. I'm telling you, if you really want to mess somebody up that done did you wrong, be nice to him. Show them some kindness. They don't know how to handle it. It's like putting hot coals on their head. They can't sleep at night. Do you hear me? It's going to be all right. Talk to this man. Because you, you'll be a fool if you don't. You spend some time with him. He might have something he can share with you. Don't give him no money. But he might have something he can share with you. Do you hear me? Something that he could share with you that would help you in the future. Your child might end up getting older and needing some kind of uh, surgery or something. And you ain't even talked to this man. He got the answer because something was going on with his father and father before him. And they could tell you about it because something he might know. Do you hear me? You owe it to yourself to at least have the conversation with the man. Now go on up there and talk to him. He ain't gonna kill you to talk to him. And when you get up there, you know what I want you to tell him? The first thing you say to him, you say, Daddy, you finna take this toupee off your head right now. <laughs> well, I'm getting ready to get on up out of here. It's been a pleasure. I'll see y'all later on. Well, thank I'm, you. Yeah, you're very well. Thank you so much. Well, Hattie, where you going? Where you going? I'm going with you. I knew that. I knew you were gonna try that, Hattie, but let me tell you something. I saw when you put your bag in my car and I took it back out the car and I brought it up there, put it under your shift row behind the pillow and put your fruit loops right back up under the bed that you be trying to hide. Everything's back in your room, all your little socks, all your little underwear, it's all back up there. So far, you can't go with me now. Yeah, I saw when you did that, so I brought it back down. I got my socks and everything, put it back in the bag, took it back outside and put it in the crunk. Now that's right. All right, no, no, go on, go on ahead, go on. I'm, uh, start the car for me, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm gonna say goodbye to these people being so nice. Start the car? Start the car. All right, deuces. <laughs> but yeah, I parked in the back, I'll see y'all later. She gonna need me for one new drive-by. She be by. I 
be right here right now. That's how why. That's how why she'll be right, right here. Come get me. Say something. Say anything. I'll slap Mama. the taste out your mouth. Rick Flair does the wrong. Woo! Come on. Don't worry. Rebecca, I love you. And I never stop loving you. Mama, I love you too. I mortgaged your house and I am sorry, Mama. Mama, I know I messed up so many times in my past. But I got my life together. Now I'm free. But it's so hard after what we've been through. But I must tell you, I'm very proud of you one day at a time. And I promise to trust you. You're my father. Yes, I know, but what I've been through, you don't care so, this will be goodbye. to explain how bad I feel but words they won't come but I wish they will all I can say is I'm sorry and I hope that we're not done son I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry oh so Sorry, son. I don't want you to live your life worried about me. I've enjoyed my time. Soon I'll be free. You're so young with your whole life. 
Octavia Cherry, Zuri Craig and Greg Kirkland. On trumpet, Melvin Jones. On sax, Michael Burton. On trombone, Saunders Sermons. On keyboards and organ, Natalie Reagans. On guitar, Derek Scott. On keyboards, Justin Gilbert. On percussions, Darius Mendris. On drums, Marcus Williams. On bass and musical director, Ronnie Carey. And now the cast. Slow it down a little bit. Wow. 
Pepsi Riley.
Peace and lovely. That's Alexis Jones.
Stephanie Ferry. Jeffrey Lewis. It's all about love. It's all about love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I found that kid on YouTube. I really did, he, him, he was singing his heart out. And Craig Lewis Band, Missouri's in the back. They're, they're amazing, amazing singers. I am beyond, beyond blessed. I get to share the stage with these people every night. These are some of the most amazing singers in the world. On July the 8th of 2012, Next month, it'll be 20 years that I've been doing these shows. 20 years. St started right down the street at the 14th Street Playhouse. Thought I'd see 1,200 people and 30 showed up. Lost everything I had, but I had a dream. And I had hope, and I kept pushing, and kept fighting. 
I had a million people tell me no, but I got one yes from God. <laughs> and I don't care how many dreamers are in this room. I don't care how many people have tried to stop you. I don't, many, I don't care how many people have told you it's not going to work. I'm a living witness that it does work. God is good. In my life, all I want to do, you know, in the end of the song, it talks about it's all about love. It really truly is all about love because all I want to do is lift us up, encourage us, make us laugh, make us think, and at the same time, leave with some joy and some faith and some hope. You know, I, my mother, God rest her soul, I had one dream when I started doing these shows, and that was just to be able to do well enough to take care of her. And because of people like you all over this country, I was able to do that and around the world. So God bless you. I will never forget it. And my prayer for you is that everything you've done for me may it come back to you a hundredfold. I am grateful to my mother every day. She didn't have a whole lot to lead me, but she taught me about Jesus. And there are a lot of people in Hollywood who believe a lot of things. And listen, God bless them. Let them believe. Listen, I don't talk about what you believe. I respect everybody, what they believe. All I ask is that you respect me and what I believe. And I believe in Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't make any apologies for it. I just, it doesn't make me perfect. It makes me redeemed. And what I try to do with everything is just give us all a little bit of hope, a little bit of lifting. So whatever you're going through in your life, if this show has spoken to you or anything that I've done, I want you to know that it's all been by design just for you. All the dreamers in this room, go back and dust your dream off if you stop. Don't let anybody stop you. I'm telling you, if I would have given up, I wouldn't be sitting here and you wouldn't be sitting there. It's easy to give up. It's easy to let go because it hurts too much to dream. Sometimes dreams can be tough and to keep going. And sometimes all you have is yourself to encourage yourself. You have to rely on and remember everything that I did. I had to rely and remember everything that my mother taught me, everything that the Bible taught me about making it and going forth and God being with me and having the faith the size of a mustard seed. And as I did that, I watched my whole life change. But there was a simple prayer that she taught me that I never forgot. It's a simple prayer. A lot of people say it, but they don't really mean it. It's a simple prayer that says, God, let your will be done. If you can say that and really mean it, your entire life will change. Because it means that you give up control. It means that you give up trying to make everything go your way and you let God be the wind in your sail and take you to the place where he wants you to go. So what I would tell you tonight, if you're going through anything, worried about your children, family, job, whatever, just stressing out, just let it be. Let it be. Do all you can, then stand and let it be. God has the answer, so let it be.